Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. Let us continue with the sexual reproduction today. So, we discussed two modes of reproduction, asexual reproduction as well as sexual reproduction. In higher organisms, two parents should be involved for the production of the baby. So, why are we switching on to complex mode of reproduction in higher organisms? Is there any limitation for asexual reproduction? Yes. When we discuss the differences between asexual and sexual reproduction, we found that variations are comparatively less in asexual reproduction. When a cell is dividing, we learned prior to the division of cell, the DNA should duplicate or DNA copying mechanism should happen. That is not an absolutely accurate process. As a result, what happens? There are minor errors happening. Those errors are not drastic, then that would lead to variations. So the number of variations happening are very less. Uh, if one individual is undergoing a variation, that will not uh, help the survival of the species. So in a population, a group of organisms can undergo variation, then only the survival of the species is maintained. So it is always better to have a mode of reproduction which can ensure more variations in the population for ensuring the survival. That's why sexual reproduction is preferred over asexual reproduction. So we know that the DNA copying mechanism is less, uh, not absolutely accurate. That's why errors are happening or variations are happening. But these variations are uh, uh, not that drastic. Because we know that if the variations are drastic, it will not be able to survive. The DNA itself will not be able to survive in that cellular apparatus and it will die. So, rather than being absolutely accurate, it should be precise and also fairly slow process so that there are no drastic variations happening to the individuals. So, every time a new generation has the variations accumulated from the past. For example, when I inherit the DNA from my father, he has got the variations from his father. So, I am actually inheriting the variations from my grandfather as well as my father. Or I can say if I go back, great grandfather, grandfather, father and myself and my children would have got all these accumulated. The same way from maternal side also I have accumulated the variations of several generations. And these variations, suppose I have so many variations from both my paternal as well as maternal sides but still I am surviving or living normally that means these are not harmful or dangerous variations. So, since these variations are coming from two individuals into a new individual and they are not that harmful variations, this, this can create a new type of organism. So, every time the creation is going to be a noble one since the variations are combining from two different individuals. No doubt, in sexual reproduction, the uh, DNA from two different individuals are coming together bringing out more and more uh, harmless variations. But now again a question here is, when we have a uh, DNA accumulating from two different parents, we will have uh, double the amount of the DNA. For example, in case of human beings, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. You know, DNA at the time of division will develop into chromosomes, right? So, uh, that means they condense to form a rod-shaped structure called a chromosome. So, we have 23 pairs of chromosome in each cell. So, imagine, suppose male, male is written like this and female is written like this. So, father has 23 pairs of chromosome in each cell. Mother also has 23 pairs of chromosomes in each cell. That means 46 plus 46. The child will have 46 pairs of chromosomes. So, the child is having double the number of chromosomes. When this child is undergoing... Uh, reproduction with its spouse so the child will have again 92 pairs of chromosomes so every generation the chromosome is increasing that wouldn't be stable that means if the chromosome number is changing the species will change because it will result in abnormality so it should not change every generation it should be the same suppose my parents had 23 pairs of chromosomes I should also have 23 pairs of chromosomes my children also should have only 23 pairs of chromosomes but how is that possible so, if you look at a human being, okay, so all the cells in the body, like where you take from the skin or from the muscle or from the blood, anywhere you take, they have 23 pairs of chromosomes, whether it is male or female. Whereas, when it comes to reproductive cells, for example, in the case of males, 
the testis will produce a sperm and in the ovary when egg is produced or ovum is produced ovum another type of division happens that is called a meiosis rest all cells divide by mitosis but in only in reproductive cells like formation of sperm in the testis or spermation of ovum in the ovaries in male and female respectively there only another type of division called a meiosis happens as a result the 23 pairs will become 23 half it becomes here also mother's ovum will have only 23 so when a sperm combines with the ovum in sexual reproduction during fertilization, a zygote will form again 23 plus 23, 23 pairs. Okay, again when this child grows up, the child will have 23 pairs of chromosomes in every cell except when it produces its gametes where it will have only 23. Okay, so when we are telling that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, understand 23 we got from father, another 23 corresponding to that we got from our mother. So usually when it is small organisms like lower organisms, the male gamete and female gamete look the same. Okay, so this number what I told is only for human beings, remember, okay. So uh, male and female gametes are looking same, they are called the isogametes. Whereas when it comes to higher organisms, the fertilization is happening or the fusion is happening within the body of the female, mother's body. And the mother's ovum is becoming the zygote and developing into the baby. So it should have reserve food material to grow and develop. Right. So uh, there is a clear cut difference between the male and female gametes here. Male gametes are motile, that is sperms are motile means moving. Why? Because they have to move in a fluid medium to reach the female reproductive organ where the ovum is placed. Whereas the ovum is non-motile, it does not have to move. Then another difference is uh, the sperms are very small because they have only the genetic material. They have to bring only 23 chromosomes from father to the child, that's their duty. Whereas the mother's ovum, as I suggested now, it is huge because in addition to this genetic material, it has a reserve food material for the zygote to develop. So it is large and stationary, whereas male gametes are small and motile. And the other difference is male gametes are produced in large number, millions of them are produced because they have to reach a hostile environment and finally it has to find out one ovum and fertilize it. Whereas ovum are produced in limited number, usually only one ovum per month from ovary. So with this, now we will move on to sexual mode of reproduction.